Hello chaps and chapesses, and this evening we're going to talk about Ooh Barracuda. I think that Barracuda are a highly underrated fish on the flats. They're a fish that doesn't seem to appear on many bodies' radar. They see them, they come, they go. They probably eat your bone fish by clomping it in half. But most people don't actually think about then targeting them on fly, which can be enormous fun. It's another apex predator. It's another big fish that hunts in shallow water. And unlike a GT or some other predators that you find on the flats, Barracuda are extremely calculating. And I think that's what makes them so much fun. They hide in plain sight. So often you will literally find them hanging off the edge of the flats or hanging in little areas where they are waiting for a meal to bypass and they just hang motionless. A bit like a saltwater pike, but with a much more gruesome more of teeth. We've all seen Finding Nemo. For a fly fisherman, they chase down flies like a cheetah chases a gazelle. They are incredibly fast when they decide that they're actually going to hit your fly. And what a lot of people don't know is that they jump and they can really get some air time. They can get right up there. Very, very exciting fish to target on the fly. Barracuda are often extremely territorial as well. You'll find areas of the flats where one old cuda will hang around and that'll be his patch. And quite often those fish will grow and grow year on and year out. I have been to the same flats in the same areas of the world to find probably the same barracuda there, but just considerably larger. A very good example is Boris the barracuda that lived on Alphonse for quite some time. He was quite famous, he lived up by morning traffic, and he just got bigger and bigger as the seasons progressed, until eventually, I think he probably died of old age, but not without giving quite a few fly fishermen a serious fright in the process. So it's just another opportunity to hunt a really big fish in shallow water, which is a fly fisherman, the visual element, that is what gets us so incredibly excited. And the speed with which they attack flies is phenomenal. So where do we find cuda? Cuda generally like to hang on depth changes. So if the flat is coming off, say for example, Turniff is a really good example, where the flat, the hard coral flat comes off and then drops down into a channel, you quite often find the cuda hanging around the edge. And the other thing they particularly like are little white holes. White holes in turtle grass, or white holes or depressions in the sand flats. These are areas where with their silver and speckled camouflage, they can almost disappear. And they can just lie there in wait for unsuspecting prey. So they just hide in plain sight, motionless, waiting. And I don't know about you, but I take it quite personally if one of my bonefish gets cut in half. And I think that's a bit that's a bit harsh. The poor bones get a pretty hard time. So if I do find a cuda in that area, I quite often want to seek retribution. So what gear do we use? My favorite rig is probably a nine weight. Nine weight is a perfect blend of power yet a nice gentle presentation. It's the rod that I go to for most species. It'll handle a big fish, but at the same time, you can quite easily manage a big cuda up to 15, 20 pounds on your seven or eight weight. So if you can switch out your bonefish rig, then you've got the same weaponry that you need. In terms of lines, floating line generally. However, with Barracuda, if you're going to target them specifically, some kind of ghost tip or even a clear floating line can be particularly helpful. They don't seem to react to the shadow of a clear line. And if you've got a long leader on that as well, then that can help your chances significantly. So for leader material, you're going to need some wire. The teeth on these things will cut through most mono, uh, even the really thick stuff, the 150 pound mono that we use for Giant Trevally or Tarpon or any of the big shock leaders. Sometimes you can get a lucky hook up on the outside, so if you haven't got time to switch, it's always worth taking the shot. However, nine times out of ten, halfway through the battle, you and your fish are going to part company as those razor blades just come down and slice you in half. Going back to how I rig for leaders, I'm fairly old school, nothing particularly fancy. I like a sort of level section of 30 or 40 pound fluorocarbon, even 50 pound fluorocarbon, and I will all bright that knot to a piece of 60 to 80 pound American fishing wire, the knottable kind, which is really easy to use. In which case, an all bright knot to one end, and then you can just use a normal standard knot with a knottable wire to put your fly on the end. The other thing you can do is to use what we call a quick rig, and that's a really easy way to fish for barracuda, because quite often, 
you know, you're fishing across a flat, you're fishing for bonefish, you're fishing for triggers, and then suddenly you'll spot one and you want to have a crack. So rather than have to re-rig an entire rod setup, a quick rig can be the way to go. And all that is, is a length of a foot long piece of wire with a knot which has already been partly pre-tied at one end, and then your fly already tied onto the other end. And then all you do is literally loop the knot around the shank of your bonefish fly or whatever else you're using, tighten it up, cinch it up, and there you have a perfectly good rig with which you can land a barracuda on. And that can be a quick way of getting to the fish. When it comes to flies, most bait fish imitations will do the job. I don't like the dressings to be too thick and too bulky. I think that barracuda tend to like more thin profile flies, something like needlefish patterns. And the ones I particularly like are the tandem flies, if you're going to target cuda specifically. Because when a barracuda hits something, it generally cuts it in half and then comes back to finish off the head afterwards. So if you've got a fly which has got a length of wire inside it with a stinger hook in the tail, you're probably going to do better on your hookups. I quite like the ones which are a mylar, mylar bodied pattern with wire in between and the hooks are not too big, something like a 3-0 on the front end and a 2-0 in the stinger. And those seem to work really, really well. Generally, we encounter a couple of different types of cuda on the flats. You get your bog standard flats cuda, which don't normally get too big. Probably a really big specimen is going to be 15 to 20 pounds. And you'll find those on the flats of most of the Caribbean destinations, hanging around the edges of the coral flats, and also sometimes into the marl flats or among the mangroves. They're a really sneaky character. In Los Roques especially, in Venezuela, you will find them around the pancake flats in the deeper water, just waiting for the bonefish to slide off the edge. In the Indian Ocean, quite often we encounter the great barracuda, which normally stays off the edge of the reef. However, on places like Providence and Cosmolito, uh, Stove and Alphonse, you will find them occasionally coming onto the flats. They'll use the channels to sneak their way up. Some of these fish are huge. Some of them are sort of one and a half meters long, and are really quite a frightening fish. So make sure that you are wary if you see one. Yes, target it, but at the same time, just be aware that it might be more interested in you than your fly. I had a particular incident on Cosmolito a very, very long time ago, on the early days of their exploration. I'd rather badly sunburnt my legs, which gave off this wonderful effervescent red glow in the water. And as I was wading across the flats with the team I was fishing with, this huge, long, grey shape came sidling across the flats towards me. And I thought, wow, that's a really big GT. And I started to cast and it continued to come straight towards me. And eventually I realised actually it was a massive barracuda. So I began to cast the fly this way and that way across the front of its nose. It was only after a little while that I realised that actually I think it was my red legs which were attracted to get across the flats and I ended up by putting both my feet together, pointing my rod at the fish's head which was about a foot long and going, it wants to eat me. I don't think it probably did want to eat me, but certainly made me wary. A bite from a fish like that could be a serious trip killer. Barracuda are one of those fish that you actually have to tempt, you have to tease them, you have to read their body language. They literally will come slowly in and investigate, and then if they decide that they're going to go for it, they almost do a backup before they sprint and chase it down like a cat. So you have to read the fish's body language and see how it's behaving. When it comes to putting the fly down, don't put the fly right down next to its head, that can often spook it. I know it's a big badass fish, yet still it's a bit frightened of something splashing next to its head. So what you want to try and do is give it a long lead. So if you're going to put a fly down, say 10 to 15 feet in front of it, let the fly sink, but also put it maybe 10 feet past it so that it has plenty of time to see the fly and then let the fly sink. At that point, like many other species, one strong pull can quite often be enough to attract the attention of the fish. And at that point, once you can read that it's interested, then you can start to speed up your retrieve. And with Barracuda, some people say that too fast is never enough, but actually, I'm one of those people that believes in speeding up it slowly. And it's quite often on your acceleration points from going from one speed to another that is enough to trigger an attack from a Barracuda. Don't forget that these fish are used to seeing bait and things flee away from them. So they don't like flies coming towards them or coming at their heads. They're not used to that at all. They want something which is going to escape, run away, so they can charge it down. And when they do come, they come really fast and it is absolutely exhilarating. 
Trying to get a good hookup is always slightly difficult in that big toothy maw, but you know, as usual, you want a good set, strip set, and hope that that hook has found some purchase in a fleshy part of the mouth rather than pressed up against the teeth or something like that. And generally speaking, as soon as you hook a barracuda, it shoots off and then quite often it'll come clean out of the water. And that's pretty exciting to watch. They are sprinters, they're not in it for the long distance, so you'll normally get one or two really fast runs out of them before they actually tend to just sulk. They mill around and they sulk and they just kind of pull. Then it's a question of getting yourself into a position where you can actually land it safely. At this point I would generally let your guide take over because at the end of the day they are much better at this than you are. However, if you have no guide, always approach from the tail. That's always good advice for a fish with very large teeth. If you can swing it around in front of you then you want to come up behind it, grab its tail and then run a hand down the middle so that you can get it underneath where the, where the fins are. Check where your fly is. Use pliers to unhook it. Don't go anywhere near barracuda's mouths with your bare hands. Because if you do get bitten by a paracuda, it can be horrible because it'll go septic very quickly and their mouth is normally full of bacteria. At the end of the day, they eat a lot of rotten meat and I don't think that they use dental floss on a regular basis. Well, there's not really too much more than that, really, when it comes to barracuda. So I would just urge you, if you see a barracuda on the flats, give it a go, because I think you'll really, really enjoy it. As always, I hope this video was useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.